Welcome to America's Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for intel, forecasts, and success strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull, and we have an incredible show for you today. We're going to talk about emerging trends in real estate. Now, this is an incredible report. It's put out every year by ULI and PwC, and we have some experts on, in Studio One here with us today. We have Mitch Rochelle. He's a real estate practice leader with PwC. Mitch, thanks for being with us. And we have Andy Warren. He's Director of Real Estate Research with PwC. Andy, thanks for being with us again this Thank year. Thank you, Michael. Glad to do it. So guys, first of all, to get us started, tell us a little bit about this report. What goes into it and how long you guys been doing it? More importantly, Michael, everybody wants to know why we're all wearing brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's real estate. It's a real estate color. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't plan it that way. Yeah. Uh, so this is in its 39th year. You've been in your seventh year. Uh, Emerging Trends is uh, in its 39th year. Uh, and just numbers wise, I think we hit a record, Andy. Uh, yeah, we have 1,600 respondents to a survey and 500 face to face interviews, which is exhausting. <laughs> but yeah. in this day and age of technology, a lot of the face to face interviews are, are virtual. But we take uh, the, the results of the report really come from both those two things. So the interviews um, give us the perspective and the insight, and then we go back and look at some data to try to make sense of all of that insight. And then the survey is what ranks a city number one or what ranks a city number two, uh, how we capture sentiment in the industry, uh, which we'll unpack uh, today, in today's show. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fantastic. And as you heard, we're going to talk about some of the top cities, some top bets for 2018 and moving forward. Uh, and I like how you use the data because you guys research the market all the time, you know, every day right. you're looking at that, but then you actually talk to people who are in the business oh, and kind of see what everyone's saying. So it's a great report. We're going to have a link to it uh, below. If you're watching on YouTube or iTunes, look for a link at CREshow.com. And let's talk about some of the key points in here. Number one, navigating at altitude. What the heck's that? I mean, <laughs> that, is, that is a fancy way of saying people are comfortable with where the market is today and they've stopped worrying about the fact that we're going to have an imminent downturn, that the uh, expansion's gone on too long, something's got to go wrong. This year, as we talk to people, you get that sense that, okay, I don't see anything on the horizon that's going to tip us over a cliff. Uh, capital's still available. Uh, fundamentals are still pretty strong, few, few spots that we're watching, but they feel good about the market. So they're kind of settling in and looking at strategies to, you know, go maybe another two, three years and just have stopped worrying about the fact that, oh, well, it's going to turn down next year. Next year's the year we turn down because it's been too good too long. Yeah. One of the things we do every year, and I think this chart will probably pop up, mm -hmm. is we ask uh, the 1,600 folks who respond to the survey, to, on a one to five scale, tell us how they feel about the prospects for profitability for the industry for the upcoming year, so in this case, 18. Um, we do it on a one to five scale. So one is abysmal and five is excellent. Uh, and if you merge good and excellent, last year the good and excellent were at 82%, uh, percent, and this year they're at almost 80%. So just to Andy's point, that sentiment uh, is remaining positive. But what's interesting here, and this is another chart we could put up there, uh, if you unpack the good versus the excellent, the goods are rising sort of at the expense of the excellence. And a couple of years ago, the excellent was about 40%. This year, it's just under 17%. So people are getting a little worried about the frothiness, but overall, the, the positive sentiment about the industry is continuing. And this is the broad spectrum of people that you're interviewing, right? This right. Just isn't just all developers who are positive yeah. by nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this brokers is, aren't positive yeah, by nature. Yeah, yeah this hey. is, we, we try and touch, we touch on the capital providers, we talk about the uh, you know, uh, people that are actually dealing with the tenants. We actually talk to corporate real estate people who are actually using the space. So we're trying to, trying to touch all that and kind of temper that. It is. All right, so let's talk about the second point. Long glide path to a soft landing. Again, what's that mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're really long on the uh, yeah, yeah. airplane metaphors. <laughs> Andy, did you buy a plane? <laughs> I did buy a plane. <laughs> no, it just we got tired of a uh, uh, maritime-based. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we went out. Uh, it just kind of uh, it fits kind of into that same theme. We're still looking at, you know, it looks like it could be controlled. Do we have we hit a point where the markets are more efficient? more transparent, there's more people playing, there's more data available than ever before. So 
have we moved past the point of always being a boom bust industry? Will we just see where we can kind of manage that downturn? And yeah, it's going to slow down, but is it more slow and controlled as opposed to, whoa, we're off the top of the roller coaster and going straight down? So. And that's what some people who maybe not been in the business more than yep. 10 or 15 years, maybe mm -hmm. that's what they look at. Well, uh, yeah. we saw a recession, that's what's going to be like again, yeah. right? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, well, if you look at your time period of your history, yeah. you know, it was interest rates can only go down <laughs> and then we have the bust and then it's kind of that so it's is it a new market it's something that people are thinking about yeah but well, you know we, listen we've been around a long time yeah. uh, collectively and if you think about it in our life in real estate interest rates have only gone down right mm -hmm. there's been some ups but for the most part mm -hmm. I entered the real estate market when you had not only double digit interest rates but they were high double digits right mm -hmm. so the, the first loan on my first uh, residence was 14%, so uh -huh. look at that. Um, one thing we do just, and this is an interesting measure of sentiment, we ask the folks who respond to the survey portion, what one word would they use to describe the industry for the upcoming year? And uh, the number one word two years in a row is competitive. And that really sort of speaks to where we are in this cycle, um, because the participants are, as, and as you appropriately asked Andy, it's not just developers, it's not just builders, it's not just brokers, it's really every walk of life in real estate. And all of them collectively are viewing it as competitive, whether it be competing for talent, whether it be competing for space, whether it be competing for opportunities, lenders competing for customers, borrowers competing with lenders, it, there's just all of that. Um, but if you look at some of the words that have jumped up in the last year, um, even though competitive, uh, treacherous, <laughs> frenzy, troublesome, neutral, and sanguine. So there's a little bit of balance there. And I think that really speaks to sort of in a word, or in that case five, how market participants feel about the industry and, and where we are sort of in this glide path. So competitive is number one. What was number two? Cautious. Cautious. Measured, uncertain, and growing. Wow. So it's got a little yeah. different views. Yeah, a yeah. little different views is for sure. We kind of look at it like maybe we've hit an efficient market where we've got about half the people feeling really good and half the people being a little nervous. Yeah, so yeah. it's just kind of. And, and one other thing, because uh, this is a cool graph for our YouTube uh, watchers too, is if you look at, go back to the Lincoln administration and look at all of the economic recoveries, one of the things you'll find is they're less, the, the peak to trough are less frequent and they're longer, right? So um, what, it, what it really tells you is in this day and age, as the economy has become more global and more interconnected to other parts of the planet, right now, the U.S. economy is benefiting from the growth in economies around the world, right? This is the only time, if you look at every developed nation on the planet, all of the economies, for the most part, are growing at the same time. Now, maybe China is not growing at the rate it was, but you have all of those economies growing simultaneously, really sort of helping each other. So we could be in this for a while. I know you're probably going to ask us what inning we're in later, we're in, we're, but we're going to be in it for a while. <laughs> That's good. Well, and I also think it's interesting that you you brought up Lincoln. Was he a cool guy to hang out with? Yeah, I really, yeah, <laughs> he was. You know, no one's really brought that beard style back. <laughs> All right. But now, this is one I want to make sure my brokers are hearing. Um, working smarter and working harder. <laughs> so uh, what's that mean? The working smarter, working harder you know, with the technology, the generations kind of influencing who's coming into the workforce. We're just seeing people use space in a different way. And are we to the point where that's going to change how much space we actually need? Are we going to need less space per worker coming into the market going further, farther? And the second aspect of this, and one that really kind of jumps out at you, is the fact that the office stock in the U.S. is pretty old. And with all this new change in technology and the way people want to manage workflows and how people come and go and where they sit, do we have the properties that can meet that demand? And then you look at how much people spend, have been spending on CapEx to kind of keep that current, it looks like it might be falling behind the curve a little bit. So part of the work harder, work smarter is going forward, very possible that investing in a current asset may be a much better investment than going out and acquiring a new building. Interesting. So you think that uh, people have to spend a little bit money, more money on the build out and the upgrades of, yeah. of our existing stock? 
Well, if you look at it this way, in the last two decades, uh, we've added, we've grown our stock of office by about 20%. So looking at it an, another way, 80% of our office stock is older than the last two decades. So there's considerable uh, aging of our office stock. And to Andy's point earlier, and I think we have some cool charts on this too, the reality is we've underinvested in the existing office stock in terms of capex dollars. Whether they be elevators and modernizing elevators, whether it be bringing technology, bringing the pipe to the building, whatever it is, we've underinvested. So um, we're going to see something shake out in the office stock where if offices are going to be the places where office using jobs are taking place, they're going to have to become more modern because the, comp the competition is people working elsewhere in what would have previously been an office using job. Okay, and you mentioned the square footage per employee and the adjustments there. So what are you guys seeing when you do this study and you, and you talk to participants, mm -hmm. are we still seeing that square footage number shrink or is that adjusted now and are people using more per employee? Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point because the last three years, everybody you talk to when they say, well, we moved into a new space and we took 20% less space than we had before. And I would, would say from the interviews, that hasn't changed. People are still doing that. Now, I think there's some confusion because people are having larger common areas because of the amenities that they have to provide to be attractive to workers in the market today. So we're seeing kind of a, a trade-off of that a little bit. But the trend does seem to be a little bit more towards continuing to shrink, even though, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit later with the new generations coming in, there may be a little bit of a pushback against that open floor plan that allows you to squeeze people in. But by and large, going through the interviews, uh, we did not run across, I think one person said that they actually took more space per employee when they signed a new lease, and that was the first time, I've been doing this five years, it's the first time I'd heard anybody actually admit to that. Hmm. Well, that's interesting, too, because you think with the job market improving mm -hmm. and retention and recruiting becoming more, more important, uh, and then millennials getting a little older. Maybe some yeah. of these millennials don't want to be on a bench with headsets, that's, right? They mm -hmm. want a little more space. space. And, and Andy yeah. teased it, and I think we'll talk about it when we talk about generations. The fact of the matter is Gen Z, which is the 65 to 70 million um, individual cohort behind the millennials, they're early indications is they want a door on an office. <laughs> What's that? Right. <laughs> uh, so millennials wanted sleeping pods and they... <laughs> yep, I don't know. Exactly. I don't, you know what's interesting? We're not convinced that millennials wanted that. Think about what happened during that period that the millennials came of age, the financial crisis came. So companies were trying to be incredibly more efficient with their space and technology was their friend, which enabled them to be way more efficient with their space. Um, if you survey millennials and ask them what they want, some of the uh, creature comforts that exist in office space, they definitely want. But if you ask them if they wanted an office with a door, <laughs> I think they'd tell you they do. Yeah. Who doesn't want an office with a door? Because yeah. what's the first thing millennials do when they need to make a private conversation uh, happen? They go to a conference room and uh, you know hijack it to have yeah. a private conversation. Yeah. So. Well, it's easier to take a nap in your office if you can shut the, shut door. the door. It is. Put a door over your head. Put a chair <laughs> over your head. For the, for the exactly. record, neither yeah, Andy or yeah, I have, have ever been. taken a nap in the office. <laughs> the office. <laughs> All right. Well, stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll have some more on what to expect from 2018, looking at emerging trends in real estate. Stay with us. I'm Michael Bull. This is America's Commercial Real Estate Show.